if anything that I can give as a message, I think is uh, I try to give courage in some way to say to people that, that you can do it. I mean, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Now, of course, it's become uh, kind of like a cliche because Obama said, "Yes, you can." I mean, I, I mean I've been saying that. Uh, uh, for, forgive me, Mr. Obama, but I did say it before. I mean, you know, uh, and I'm not president of the United States. <laughs> Maybe it would be good if I was. Anyway, you know, but uh, it's a question of... Uh, um, I believe that whenever, whatever you really want to do, you can. I believe so. And that's why, in a way, I was very recently... was a little... Uh, past a very difficult moment, because... I had this, well, I think it was a wonderful idea, I mean, and many people believed in it too, uh, to create something in an idea where, where the conversation and the relation and between people would be on another level than just political and just between politicians who decide everything for us, and that's a great danger. There is a saying somewhere, I don't know if it was a Frenchman who said or something, that you shouldn't leave politics only to politicians, like you shouldn't leave war only to generals. You know, and that was my philosophy in a way all the time, because that's why I created certain festival, or whatever you want to call it, because I think it's for us, the artists, to take things in hand and not just allow it to people who sort of manage us and we be or, or whose servants we become in a way. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, of course, we can say that in all the times, um, both people like uh, Bach or Mozart or Beethoven were in a way servants of the Duke of that and the Prince of that and so forth and dedicated because they had the, the ability uh, to, to live. But, uh, but it must be also said that some of these princes and some of these dukes were people of, uh, of a certain enlightenment, a certain love for the uh, impossible, in other words, for the spiritual, you know, beyond the things. And that allowed these great composers and, and um, creators to, to live also. But they left them with freedom. In any case, but you are a big enough artist, you take the freedom. As long as you have some basis on which you can live on, right? Because, of course, if uh, Bach had 23 children, you obviously had to feed them too. And, uh, you know. But related to this. But related to the present, I mean, uh, somehow. Uh, I think uh, the last, I mean, I don't say the last thing they think about, I mean, the political side of the situation, uh, is uh, what is what is something to do with the soul and the spirit, in other words, uh, which, is, uh, which is culture, which is the part of the eternity, because otherwise there is nothing. I mean, if you only think of, look, even in the Bible, I think it was written somewhere, that man will not live from bread alone. And that one should not really forget. I mean, you can think of what happened during the last war when people were in camps. What kept them alive? How could they live through that thing? Because somewhere they believed somewhere that somehow the, the light might, might survive. It was a question of surviving for one minute to the next. But it was there. If you only can think that uh, the only way for you to survive is to have a, a, a penny or a... a of 50 cents or 10 cents more than than what you have, then you are kaput. I mean, that's it. And that's what one is led to. And that's way, one way of enslaving the, the people in some ways. I don't know, it doesn't go, what, what you would say, what does that go into a program about musicians of music? <laughs> but it has everything to do with it because, it, uh, you know. Yeah, but this is it. Uh, our main theme is inspiration. And um, well, all, all we're wondering, we were, it is, we, yeah, you know what you said, like, you don't want to be seen as a, a man who was 87, you know, uh, like, oh, he's almost dead. No, you are still alive, you are still. Yeah, but I'm not really talking about me. I mean, I mean, I would be dead anyway, and, I, I, and there was a few years before that I wasn't yet alive. I mean, it is, uh, I mean, between uh, what is, between one uh, non entity non-entity and another non-entity, there is little interval which is called life. Mm -hmm. And that is during that time that you can express yourself and say some things about maybe periods where you're not still alive and about periods where we are not going to be alive anymore. Mm -hmm. But I mean to say, uh, 
You say about the inspiration. I say about the inspiration about young people. But because I in the master classes in the stift, you, that's why the stift also is important, Daniel Rowland says. Mm -hmm. um, that you learn, that also young people learn to, um, uh, uh, learn to dare to use yeah. their imaginations and their fantasies. Well, I think, uh, I think, I, you know, uh, music, making music is a way of being able to fly above the earth, but you could never leave the earth completely. But I think this is in relation to one thing, which is, of course, a great thing, but I think it's a general thing of, I mean, inspiration, I think the situation, the, the world situation as it is today, at least in our part of the world, I'm not talking about certain parts of the world where the question of spirit and so forth exists anyway, but the situation is so terrible that you can't even talk about spirituality because if you don't even have enough water to feed your child which is dying in your hands, then what can you talk about? But all right, we are not in that situation completely. But the thing is that the lack of inspiration. I mean, people, I can see whatever there are elections, and there are now elections, European elections, by the time this film is finished, we will know what the result is, uh, okay? What are they talking about? I mean, do you see anyone really talking about what makes life more interesting and really worthwhile to live with a certain inspiration by except that saying that they are only talking about how much about this, about how much about that, and, and, and the milk should cause that. I mean, God, do you think really people are so stupid <laughs> that that's the only thing they can think about? I mean, I really, I don't think so. And we are reduced more and more to this kind of preoccupation, and that is a very, very serious lack of inspiration, <laughs> if I may say so. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to fall into the, uh, the trap in which people say, yes, but darling, uh, dear Mr. Or Professor Gitlis, what are you telling us? I mean, uh, how, what kind of inspiration can you have when you don't have anything to eat? I agree with that. But we are unfortunately, unfortunately perhaps, we are not in that situation in Europe anyway, or in the Western side of the world. You know, maybe we should have that, so then we would know what we would have to be inspired about. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, we have, yeah. I mean, I could, for God's sake, I mean, in in our parts of the world, I mean, what are they worrying about? That there won't be enough to eat? Of course there is. It's only a question of distribution, that's true. It's not a question that some people should have everything, some people should have nothing. And that's what the world is becoming more and more to, you know. So I, you know, but I'm not going to uh, uh, make a, a revolution about it. The revolution will come probably in by itself if we are not careful, or if we are too careful. 